um, our Shetland Chamber of Commerce's new luncheon series, Mind Your Business, brought to you with financial assistance with the Lakeview Credit Union and Community Futures. They're our sponsors, as well as the Pomeroy Inn and Suites. They sponsor our room for us. I would like to recognize that we're hosting this event on the traditional territory of Treaty 8. Thank you for allowing us to live, work, and play here in this glorious area of the province. My name is Naomi Larson. I'm the executive director of the Chetwin Chamber. It's been over, I can't believe it's been over two years since we had a luncheon. Wow. Um, and if, coming in today, I just felt like I was starting over completely from scratch. <laughs> the lady down in the coffee room was like, oh, you're back. Did you need coffee? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's coffee and there's sparkling water available. And today's meal was provided by Crazy Beans Bistro. Um, so there is, uh, everybody has a little ticket, so there is a door prize today donated by one of our chamber members, SJA Promo, who came here today from Fort St. John. So we'll do the draw at the end. Uh, this weekend, this Saturday, is the Community Expo. It's a one-day, uh, like, mini trade show uh, that's being held at the rec center. Um, it's from 10 to 5, so come on down and um, check out our booths. I think there's about 25 booths. And then we have Anytime the Snack Time, which will be right outside as well. So she'll be having her snack truck there. Um, and next year, our trade show's back to normal, April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. It's going back to normal. Um, and uh, so now I would like to introduce uh, Melanie, is it Miracle? Correct. Miracle, the Chapman yeah. District Hospital Administrator here in our community. Um, you arrived 2021? Correct. February. Yeah. So. February 2021. So now we figure it's a really good time to have her come out and introduce yourself mm -hmm. to the community and uh, tell us what's happening at our hospital. Excellent. Thanks, so Thanks, Naomi. So as Naomi said, I'm Melanie Miracle. I'm the official title is Health Service Administrator for Chetwin and Tumbler Ridge. Uh, but I just, the title doesn't really resonate with me. So when I introduce myself to people, I just say site director. I think that makes a lot more sense and uh, allows people to better understand what I do. So that means that I cover the hospital, um, the primary care clinic here in Chetwin, as well as Tumbler Ridge, the um, health center that we have down there. Um, and I've really, in the past uh, year and five months, really grown to um, really enjoy this community very welcoming community um, and so I just have to say the Northeast is the place to be. <laughs> so that being said, um, I, I also want to acknowledge that we are um, live working and playing on the unceded territory of uh, the Treaty 8 First Nations and um, I think maybe what I'll do is first start on a little bit of background about me so that you everyone who hasn't met me before has a bit of an understanding. Um, so I've been working in healthcare almost 20 years. I started I started off my career as an environmental health officer specializing in communicable disease. So inspecting places like tattoo parlors, long-term care facilities, uh, that type of thing. Um, and then after that, I thought, oh, I really like healthcare. So I'm going to go work in a hospital and I'm going to be an infection control coordinator. This was uh, post SARS in Ontario. I'm from out east. And um, I worked for a large organization in Kingston, Ontario. I did that. I really enjoyed it. Um, but then I kind of had, I think we have all had moments in our careers that you kind of think, oh, the grass is greener on the other side. Uh, moments and so I thought oh you know being a, a, an inspector and being out enforcing uh, laws uh, was interesting and exciting so I decided to become um, uh, occupational health and safety inspector so work safe BC equivalent um, and I did that again post SARS as a specific to healthcare. Um, I did that for a while and then thought, no, you know, I really love hospital more than I thought. So back I went into hospital where I was um, a regional uh, manager for uh, risk management, but under my portfolio included accreditation, patient safety, quality improvement, security, and I'm missing something. So it was a large portfolio, but I learned a lot. In that time, um, I worked a lot with legal counsel uh, on any claims that came through to, to the organization that I worked for. And I also had my two daughters at that time. And so I had this epiphany. I'm like, I have these two girls that I want to raise to be smart, independent women like myself. And so one of those aspirations that I have for smart, independent women is that um, we always follow our dreams. So I thought, okay, I've had this dream since I was 12, telling my grandparents that I'm gonna be a lawyer. 
but I've never tried. So I'm super lucky. I have the best husband in the world, most supportive. I went to my husband, Scott, and I said, hey, I am going to apply to law school, only one, the one that I can commute to, and if I don't get in, I'll be able to tell my daughters that, you know what, mama tried. Her life still turned out okay. Well, I got in. So then off I went, career number five, I'm gonna become a lawyer. <laughs> so I did that, um, and afterwards the plan always was, I'm not gonna work in private practice, I'm gonna come back into healthcare. And so after I graduated, we moved out to BC, and I've been working with Northern Health now for four years of which a year and five months have been here um, in the site director role. And um, so I think maybe what I wanna land first is my vision. My vision for our sites here is to provide the best service possible to the uh, clients, residents within our community. So I want you to sort of understand that when I'm trying to do things, for the hospital here, for the health center, for primary care. It's always with that lens. What can we do as a team, because we are a team at Northern Health, what can we do to have that vision be um, materialized? And so that's where I'm, I'm kind of coming from. So one of the things, and I'm gonna move around because I don't really like standing in one spot. Um, one of the things that I, um, you know, hear a lot about and a lot of questions from people, whether it's on Facebook or in person, tell us about diversions. So I thought I would start with the, you know, the elephant in the room and kind of have everyone understand what diversions are, what they mean, how do we get there so that people can have an understanding. So um, within our health center, uh, at the hospital in particular, because that's where the diversions are, um, what we have um, is a, a mixed staffing model. So we have registered nurses, and we have care aides, and we have licensed practical nurses. I will now, after having said those, reduce them down to their acronyms, so RNs, LPNs, I'll, I'll say care aides because it just works better. Um, so uh, in this mixed care model, uh, one of the things is that everyone has sort of a different scope of practice. So each of the care uh, providers can only do certain things. And so if we are missing an RN who has the biggest scope of practice, we can only care for a certain subset of the population. So we currently have, don't quote me on these numbers, but I think we have, um, three or four open RN lines out of a group of, let's say, eight or nine. So this is potentially almost 50% of the RNs that we need to have, we don't currently have. Now, before we think, oh, this is just a Chetwin problem, this is a Northeast problem, this is a Northern Health problem, this is a BC problem, this is a Canada problem, it's actually a worldwide problem. So we're all actively trying to recruit that small group of nurses that everybody wants. So that's, that's one thing. Um, LPNs have a scope as well, um, and same problem with, with the RNs we have with the LPNs. We have three open lines of about the seven positions that we do have. So we actively go into every month with at least 20 plus days of potential diversions. That is a lot. But our staff, because we're a team, are amazing. They come together. They work with Charla, our clinical practice lead. They work with Dagny, uh, my admin assistant. And we try and plug as many holes as we can so that we don't have to go on diversion. And this is diversion because of lack of staffing. And so last month, for example, um, we had 22, I believe, potential days. And we were able to bring it down to four planned diversions in that time. And so I want a big round of applause for our team that we were able to do that. We had two other diversions, so a total of six because of the other reason why we go on diversions is patient acuity or volume. And so we did have situations last month well, while we had our complement of nurses and care aides and other support services staff, we didn't physically have the beds we needed or the people were so acute that we had to have our core team working on one or two people only so we couldn't allow more people to come in to emerge because then we couldn't provide the right level standard of care. 
So these are some of the rationales as to why we have diversions. It's not that we want to. We do our best to work to not have it. But if we kept the doors open, we wouldn't have the right staffing complement to keep people safe with the standard of care that we would be expecting. And so we have to close our doors. And so I'm hoping that that helps people understand the quagmire that we are in uh, within Canada, really. It's not just the North. So um, I think we're in a unique situation here in the North that we've seen diversions regularly over years and years, unfortunately. Because my experience here in the North is we have a hard time recruiting people globally in the North for anything. And so we already, before going into COVID, didn't have the enough people that we wanted to have working in probably many organizations across the North, including Northern Health. Then we bring in COVID from two years ago. And what happens there? People get scared. And so some of the nurses and healthcare providers decided, I don't want to have to work with COVID and maybe bring it home to my family and have them pass away or get really ill. So I'm going to find myself a different job. And I might still stay in healthcare, but I'm not working eMERGE or inpatient units anymore because that's where the real risk is. And so we had an exodus. Some people retired early, some people left the profession altogether, others moved on to non frontline roles. And so we already had not a good base complement, but now we added to it. And then on top of that, um, we were not keeping up with the spaces in colleges and universities to really meet the demand that we need. So when we add all of this together, the North feels it much more acutely than anywhere else. And so that's kind of the situation. And so another thing that happened was there were many more public health positions that came up, contact tracing, education, areas that maybe we didn't realize we needed to focus on as much until the pandemic hit. And so nurses then moved into these positions, again, taking away from the front line. So this is the landscape that I, you know, Chetwin is in when it comes to diversions and what we, what we have to do. So that's the background explanation, the bad news story, but let's always do glass half full because that's Melanie. So glass half full. What do we do? We hired three um, uh, nursing students uh, last summer who were going into their uh, fourth year this year. Um, we were only able to hire one of them, but she's already started and she is fabulous. We love Casey. So Casey's here. She started last week and she's going to go through like a three month orientation. But once she's done that, we'll have one new body that we'll be able to use that's a nurse. The other two decided to go to Grand Prairie. So we haven't lost them to the north, but they wanted to start out their career at a larger site to gain that right experience. And they haven't discounted coming back to the community. So we're going to continue our relationship with them to ensure that they're aware that we love them, we want them back. And so we're going to do that as well. Um, we had um, a lot of openings for care aides and for a while we had zero. We now have three people who are more or less in permanent positions. We're doing some HR stuff in the background, which I won't go into detail. And we have two casuals. So we've been able to fill most of that role to again help with the burden when we have staff shortages, which is a big plus. Because ultimately for patient care, I want to ensure that we're not shipping people out during diversions, that they get to stay in our community and the care aides are part of the team that helps us do that. So that's good news. Um, what else do I have to say? Northern Health has created what they call the travel uh, nursing resource pool. And so what this is, this is for staff who like working frontline, but they like flexibility. And so what this does is these people, instead of holding a line in, let's say, Chetwin Hospital all the time, 
they now are able to work at any Northern Health site and pick how they want it. So what we're finding with um, the changes from COVID, the ability for people to work from home, people are looking for a better work-life balance. And so the travel resource pool allows staff to have this because they can say, you know what? I wanna work solid for three weeks at Chetwin, and then I'm gonna take a month off because I can, as opposed to working four days on, three days off, three days on, four days off, they get to kind of have this different, better lifestyle. And so my understanding is, again, don't quote these numbers, but we started about a year and a half ago with maybe 20 nurses in this resource pool. We are now up over 100. And so currently, this travel resource pool um, is for specific high need sites, but they're expanding in January to include Chetwin. So we're working towards that. So I think that will also help. And I also think that I, myself, and Sharla, our clinical practice lead, whenever we get agency staff to come in, we do a real heavy recruitment push. So we chat with them, we, we ask questions. How could we get you here? Have you heard about the travel resource pool? Why don't you sign up for that if you don't want to come work here? So we're wheeling and dealing as much as we can. <laughs> And so I think that's also another good news story. So currently, um, the travel resource pool um, does coverage for med surge acute um, slash emergency rooms, but they're looking to expand for public health um, and I think long-term care as well. So that again, I think is a good news story for the North. Um, and this is an innovative thing Northern Health came up with. The other health authorities want it too now because they see how awesome it is. So again, good job for Northern Health. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention, because I've spent a lot of time on the hospital, is our primary care clinic. So we are so lucky to have four physicians. We are so lucky to have a part-time nurse practitioner. We are so lucky to have a full complement of nurses now as of February in our um, public health and interprofessional practice roles. So that's things like vaccinations for kiddos, um, well baby checks, mental health. We even have an OT. We're working on a PT, fingers crossed that stays in this room, but we're close. Um, so I think our newest goal for the community is to really strengthen community supports. Because ideally that prevention stream and that keeping people at home is what is the most important because being in acute care, being in long-term care is not as helpful as people being able to be as independent as they can in the community or to do the preventative measures that we keep them out altogether. So that's where the newest focus is. We've always had the primary care, but we have been understaffed and so we haven't been able to focus as much as we would have liked. We also have, um, a local student, a university student. Um, by the way, we have volunteering is back up and running. So if anyone wants to volunteer, there's a new volunteer process. We'd love to have volunteers again. So that reminds me, local student. She is in her third year at UNBC and looking to go forth. She wants to be a doctor. She reached out to us and she said, I want to do a project with you guys. And we said, we want you to do a project with us too. Because if we can have you, you know, seeing and being part of, we can help A, in your application process, because you're doing stuff in healthcare, but B, helping keep you in our community. So we are working, this is the first time we've had a volunteer like this. The volunteers process has really evolved over the past two years to the point where we can open back up. Previously, people would just show up, go, I'm here, I'm ready to volunteer. And that was great, but there's some, again, legal hat. There's some legal issues with that. You know, when a volunteer's on site, they count as a worker. So we need to train them right so that they're safe. Healthcare environments, there's a lot of risks. So we have some new processes. She's gone through these processes and we're hoping in June to bring her on board to do a quality improvement project um, on home support. So we want to take a look at what are we providing are we providing it right? Is there a better model? And if there is, 
how can we make those changes so that we're providing the best care? So that's kind of the news on Chetwin and area. We're working on some palliative care stuff, both in Tumblr Ridge and here, to have that be more accessible, accessible and available. And that's all I can think of right now. So I'm hoping that kind of helps land everyone where we're at, where we're going, and what the vision is. Any questions? Questions? Yeah. I have, actually, I have a couple questions. Great. Actually, three now. No, yeah, awesome. So I'll start with, um, when you guys go on diversion, do you advise the ambulance service and to make sure that they're in town then? Yeah, great question. We advise ambulance. We advise uh, dispatch. We advise patient transfer network. That's the um, uh, provincial-wide um, service that tries to decide what level of risk the people are at to then decide who gets transported first based on how many ambulances we have. We also advise RCMP so that they're aware, and we advise all of the hospitals in our area as well so that they know that they might expect more people. Awesome. Yeah. So you said about the R, hiring RNs. Um, is now that um, some of the restrictions are being lifted more and more, is there any chance of hiring back a lot of the nurses that were let go because they wouldn't get the vaccine? It's always, it's always on the table. But from what I understand, many of those additional positions that were created are remaining. Because I think there's been a recognition that there were areas that needed um, better oversight, let's put it. Um, and so, uh, there's that, and as far as I'm aware, number one, COVID restrictions haven't changed in healthcare. So while they may have changed going to your local restaurant, the library, the rec center, they haven't in healthcare. So we still have the same cleaning levels, screening, um, vaccination status. So a lot of those COVID positions have been extended um, because we still have them in place. So I, I like your question because there is possibility as we move down and things do change for healthcare, they haven't yet. Okay. Yeah. And then my last one is, um, you mentioned volunteers. What would these volunteers be doing? Like what, what kind of volunteers are you looking for? Yeah, um, so <clears throat> one, of the, one of the groups of volunteers that I know we've always been looking for um, for the hospital is in the long-term care. Um, because we're a very small site, um, we don't have the same type of resources as like a, a 60 bed or 100 bed site would have. And so um, having volunteers who can help engage with the residents is what we typically try and recruit our, our volunteers for. So it could be, um, you know, coming to do bingo. It could be coming to play some music if somebody is uh, musically inclined and talented not me, um, coming to, you know, do puzzles, um, help in our gardens with the residents, so there, but mostly that's where we're looking. Now, if people reach out separately to say, listen, like this um, young lady did, we will try our best to bend over backwards to try and find places for volunteers if they have particular interests. Okay. So I just want to put that out there, that there is availability to do that in case you know if anyone in the community, high school student or somebody else who's thinking about, you know, maybe med school nursing and they want to try it out by volunteering, we will try or do our, do our best to do that. Thanks, Valerie. That was it. Yeah. Yes. Just to touch on Laura's question about yeah. volunteering, is there, does Northern Health have a, um, a department where they would advertise that they're looking for volunteers? Well, we have a volunteer department, and so that's why the process is now all different. Um, it's an online application on our website. Um, once the volunteer goes through the various processes of getting their criminal reference check done, doing some education modules, which is about five hours, um, and that a site is designated and a role is sort of picked, um, then after that, that's how kind of we do the volunteer process. So. If, um, if there's anyone out there who is keen or interested, that's where we would um, suggest for them to go, uh, is to the volunteer um, department that we have. And um, as for advertising, I actually don't know that question, 
So I will follow up with um, my liaison, with the volunteer department, because I think it's a fabulous suggestion. Maybe we put it on Facebook to say, hey, we're back up and open. If people want to volunteer, here's the new process. Okay, but for now, they can actually go on the Northern Health site uh, under job postings and there's a volunteer. Not job postings. I think I've, I've never looked. But I think what you do, they just sent me a link. They're like, okay. send it to this girl. And so I go hit oh, forward okay. and here you go. <laughs> but my guess would be you go onto the main page, go in the search function, hit volunteer, and my hope would be something comes up. <laughs> if you were to check this out and you find it doesn't come up, please let me know. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of a comment. We're from Fort St. John. Um, but my niece actually just graduated from the Gary program. The one that they, and I don't know if it's in Northern Health or if it's all of um, the province, but yeah, she graduated from high school last year, did the nine month, got okay. paid to go to school or school. The HCAP program, I forget yeah. what it stands for, but yes, perfect, yeah. love so to hear that. Yeah, and, and I don't know if that was available or you had participants here, but it's been fantastic. I know she's hoping when she does her year in Cary, that mm -hmm. there'll be an LPN kind of option to yep. do a similar LPN. thing, but that's a fantastic program. We were just on a meeting, Charlotte and myself, with Northern Lights College, and they do have an upgrading program there. Um, I believe, was it? It's um, from being a Cary transitioning to an LPN instead yep. of 22 months. I think yeah, it's 16. Something yeah. like that. She's very eager to yep. do and it, like just a fantastic program, because again, she's, yeah. she, it's, it's been a wonderful thing for her, um, and she wants to stay in the North and loves the yeah. North, and I think that's how you build some of those things, and I agree. Yeah, she's I agree. eager to put her year in and then be able to yeah. move on yeah. to the next time. Isn't it fully funded? It's full, she got paid to go to school, and she worked part-time at Peace Villa, yeah. you know, while it to was get your going experience on, and, and yeah, she's the yeah. youngest person ever to graduate from it. I, I oh, understand I because it. normally it's a two-year program, and mm -hmm. it was the condensed, and she went Correct. right from high school into that's great yeah, that, and yeah. I say, it wouldn't be my my job role, but she is just finding it the most fulfilling thing. Yeah, we yeah. we did have openings in Chetwin yeah. from the very first uh, cohort. Um, we had uh, some applicants, and uh, that weren't successful for various reasons. It does happen, um, and then we haven't had any applicants since. Although we do post it as available for both community as well as um, healthcare. And this last round, we had I think two applicants that we've agreed if they move yeah. forward with it that we will welcome them on board and, and work in Chetwin. Yeah. And so, but I don't think that cohort starts until October. Again, don't quote me on it, but the, there were applicants. We did say yes, and we're very excited to have them. It's a yeah. great program. I know my, when, my, when she got my aunt, was jealous. She's like, oh, if only that had been when she separated for like all those times that could have been a great opportunity for someone for a later in life career and that's what yeah so no agree yeah, no, I agree yeah, I agree. yeah. Take care. Okay. thank you so very much